What's up? Okay, cool. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you are doing well. And it's time for... Ugh. <clears throat> Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well, and thank you for watching this exclusive interview on YouTube from our Twitch page, twitch.tv slash the needle drop, with none other than Jamie Stewart of Shushu fame. We're going to be talking about the newest release, Oh No, that has just dropped. I've been listening to it, but, you know, unfortunately I haven't given enough spins yet for a review, but that's going to be coming uh, very soon. But hopefully before I get that out, we can gain a little bit more insight on the LP and anything else happening around that by having a conversation with Jamie, obviously. Uh, so, hey, man, thanks for taking the time and coming through. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for, thank you for taking the time. Um, all right. So, I mean, let's just, uh, let, let, let's just get into it. Oh, no, this new LP, which, I mean, Shushu seems to have been diving into a lot of interesting concepts and detours um, thematically and stylistically, especially as of late. Uh, what exactly was the impetus for this new project where you're embarking on this uh, pretty dense series of duets here? Uh, it's it's a little bit of a story and I'll try to not have it take 10 million years. Um, it, it didn't it didn't start out as duets. We were, every time we finish a record, generally right away, we'll start the next one. And uh, Angela and I were doing sketches for it. Um, and then uh, in, just in a, in a relatively short period of time, uh, about six people that I was very close friends with uh, and music colleagues with, um, just for lack of a better description, pretty brutally fucked me over in different ways. And it was just coincidental that it was so many people in a short period of time. None of the instances were related. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, generally a little wobbly as a person emotionally. I don't handle stress very well. Um, you know, my, I, I don't totally have it together <laughs> um, in a lot of ways. And it, it, it essentially led to my having a nervous breakdown. There was a bunch of other things too, but it was sort of, you know, I'm kind of on the edge anyway. And then like a, a, a lot of that, Poor treatment led me to my brain. Not, not to you know, um, do a heavy interruption here, but just to add a little more context, was this around the time um, that on Instagram you had kind of made that announcement that you were going through some oh, stuff? Oh, yeah, it was, it was at that time. Okay, so that was yeah. like connected? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Uh, and um, at, at that, not long after that, um, a lot of people that I had not expected to hear from or hadn't heard from in years and years and years, and a lot of people interested in the band and a couple of close friends of mine uh, took great pains to check out on me and make sure that I was was doing okay. And I and I because it was so many people that I hadn't expected to hear from and and a lot of people that I, I didn't know it it in a very sweet and positive way, you know, pulled me out of whatever morass I was in by reminding me that not every single person on the world is a total pile of garbage. And, just, you know, I, I just received a lot of unexpected kindness and it helped me get back on my feet really actually pretty quickly. Uh, and it, the, the idea of doing duets seemed like, you know, in, inherently, they, you know, a duet is obviously two people doing something together. And, you know, I'm not particularly social. I'll, I don't really like hanging out with people that much. But it was other people who had helped me. It said, you know, come back onto Earth. So uh, duet seemed like uh, a, you know a symbol of of uh, feeling grateful for for people's generosity. And you know, just to kind of define this a little more clearly for people who might not be familiar with the record yet, um, how far would you say you kind of push that term or that? you know, idea of a duet on this record? Because, you know, if people get into this album, we're, we're not exactly, you know, in for a side by side, you know, type scenario. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is a unique uh, track list of vocal melds. Um, so, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, collaborating and, and putting certain singers on certain tracks, what was kind of the mental process and, and the creative process when deciding, uh, you know, what the songs are going to sound like and who appears on what track and 
what role they play because we're not talking about a record of like standards and you guys are just kind of like you know putting your own vocal spin on it uh it well it really depended on the song and the particular singer insofar as some of the people on the record i am i've known for years and years and years and years and i you know close to socially and some people I've known for a long time, but we mostly have like a music friendship, you know, we see each other's shows or something. And then there's a few people on there who I have never met before. And some, and a couple of them I have yet to actually still meet in person, but I'm a big fan of their singing. Um, you know, so for some songs, which might be, you know, a little bit more abstract, uh, you know, or maybe impressionistic, it would, you know, would, or, or, you know, kind of a neutral story, essentially, you know, that would generally go to somebody that I didn't know so well, because I didn't want to dump all this personal information on somebody that I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, you know, for somebody that you don't know, you know for, the, for them to have to deal with, you know, but there were some people that, uh, like, there's a song called um, I Dream of Someone Else Entirely with Owen Pallet, and Owen and I have been friends for years and years and years, and um, I mean, we don't, we don't talk all that often, but when we do talk, it's generally about something with the an amount of emotional seriousness and for me that is a very personal kind of difficult song so he was somebody that i knew uh that i wouldn't be uncomfortable dealing with it and i knew that would also understand where it's coming from that i could you know trust trust to put it across and then others you know and then others some, some other people was just you know kind of technically who i thought might might sound good on a particular song um so it was it was kind of a, kind of a mix of all of those things. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. I had a question about exactly that, considering that you know what what I know of your and in, in Shushu's music. Um, in many cases, you do tend to write from a very personal place, um, and in some instances, uh, that can become so personal and so painful. Uh, at least the experience that you're referencing you know, you won't even go into what exactly the song is entirely about. You know, I think this is, you know, evidenced in some of the drunk commentary, uh, you know, that you've uh, done for some of the records that you've released over the years. And, you know, as a result of that, over the course of this record, you considered who would appear on certain tracks, depending on sort of like your level of emotional intimacy with that person, like this song or this topic might be too heavy for this person doesn't know me as well it wasn't it wasn't so much for them i just didn't want to voice that on yeah, yeah yeah that i didn't really have a relationship you know i i didn't want to i didn't want to impose that on somebody who i am hoping to get mm -hmm. to know better um you know but if it's somebody that i'm friends with you know we impose on each other all the time as friends do so <laughs> got it and um you know to to get a little more specific with it um all the collaborations on this record, were they completely born out of that uh, period in that situation of people reaching out to you? Like, were all of the individuals here, you know, directly from that situation? Or did the positivity of that situation cause you to also kind of start reaching out to other people that you've been hoping to collaborate with? It, 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 was, more the, it was more the latter. There, there are a few people who are on it. Um, who were I, you know, who I, who I talked to during this period. Um, and then, and then some people, the, uh, the idea of essentially what you said, you know, the, the idea of working with somebody else was born out of uh, other people having had reached out. And, um, I guess, uh, you know, I, I have to ask this because this is something that's come up again and again and again in many interviews I've done over the past year, but uh, in what ways, and I imagine it, you know, could impact it specifically in a lot of ways with this kind of record, but, you know, in, in what ways did maybe the pandemic, you know, make the process of doing such a collaborative LP more difficult or maybe different than uh, other collaborations that you've done in the past? Because, uh, you know, the Shushu discography is filled with crossovers with other artists. You know, weirdly, it actually... I think made it turn out better uh, or more interesting potentially um, insofar as with, with the, uh, I was able to do the vocals with Sharon Bennett and, and Alice Bag and Angela, my bandmate and I share a house. So we were able to do ours together, but everybody else was through sending files. Um, but I, I think because the ma majority of the people on it uh, were able to work without me like six feet away from them, they, you know, there was no pressure for them to have to do it the way that they would think that I would want it. So a lot of the vocals I got back were 
very, very, very different than what I expected, which is the best part of working on music, is to be surprised by something. Uh, in, in every case, we just, uh, like sent a guide melody and some lyrics and said, you know, if you if this feels right to you, you know, follow this beginning to end. But if if you want to go someplace else, by all means, please, please, please be yourself. And uh, you know, in, in every case, when we got something back, it was uh, not what not the way that I would have approached it, which is fantastic because there's a fucking enough of me in my life already. Um, but then also, it was. Uh, uh, you know, uh, several of the people did stuff radically different than what I had sent them or added things like George Lewis from Twin Shadow, like put saxophone on it, you know, which it totally made the song that he's on, you know, it made the song so much more and so much more interesting and so much more exciting. But, you know, if we were in the studio together, you know, at my house, I don't have a saxophone, you know, and I wouldn't have asked him to do it or, or uh, Haley from Circuit the, uh, you know, sent me like 20 both tracks and a lot of them were you know, really layered and really strange and unusual. And uh, Deb Demure from Dread Majesty sent me like 15 tracks of just weird, like grunting sounds, you know? <laughs> Which, you know, if, if you listen to the song, you wouldn't really know that there were vocal sounds, but they're a big part of the kind of underlying texture mm -hmm. of the song. So I, I, think, I think because there was that distance, people were felt more free. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it it gave the, a lot of the songs more depth like, than they would have had if I was sort of sitting there nervously, you know, hoping that everyone was feeling. Sure, sure. Now, Haley's appearance that you just referenced um, certainly stood out to me on the record because not only does it have a really operatic flavor to it, but, um, you know, n not. Yeah, she she goes pretty deep on that kind of back. And, you know. Not really knowing the conditions of the ways in which every track was tracked or recorded or, you know, put together and, and assuming, you know, obviously the pandemic had to be impacting things in some way. Uh, that track to me, as far as like the placement and the, I guess, interplay of the vocals came off like really natural, you know, it felt like it was all happening uh, quite organically, despite, you know, again, thinking that the, this this could have been assembled in posts like this, but it just felt, you know, really in the moment. I think it's just a testament to what a badass she is. Um, and we, we had a chance to tour together a, a few years ago. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we're sort of like a medium level band. Like sometimes we play really small shows and sometimes we play, you know, more medium sized shows. But holy cats, she destroyed every night at no point, even if there was like 15 people there and it was some like garbage bar. Did she ever do anything other than? completely obliterate herself and the, and, and the people there every night. So if that song worked, it's because she's a badass. Uh, were there any, I guess, in an ideal uh, world collaborations for this record that you were hoping to get? Um, but uh, uh, There are probably for as many people who were on it, there was as many people who either said no or weren't able to do it. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, I kind of said this before, but it's a lot to ask somebody. I mean, singing is a, a tremendous amount sure. of work. And you know, and everybody who's on it, everybody I asked is a super busy working musician. Um, so which, and I, I, and I'm not saying this to be nice, but you know, everybody who was on it did a superlative job. There wasn't a single uh, tape that I got back that I was like, well, this is okay. You know, like every single one, it just, uh, everyone annihilated it. Um, uh, you know, I, extraordinarily grateful and honored that everybody put so much heart into it. Um, you know, were there any takes or collaborations on this project that put you in a situation where you almost had to like, I don't know, um, start rewriting the song in a way or rebuilding it because of the way a certain collaborator was going or something? Like when you handed these songs over to the people who you were hoping to work with, um, like how, I guess, clear, or complete of an idea were they kind of functioning off of before they, you know, handed back their collaboration. I think they were, they were all, if I were recalling correctly, they were all kind of like 85% done. The sequence, the arrangement, you know, or like the, the A to A to B um, was more or less, was more or less fleshed out. And I think that that, that probably, hopefully, the idea to have it be more complete was just to make it easier for people. So they, you know, when something's done, you you can stretch out a little more. If it's things are uh, more murky, then it's harder to let yourself go on your own sure. working on it. Um, but that said, you know, in every case, if somebody did something really different than 
we know them, but we sent them. You know, it was just exciting to have it, to have it, you know, uh, to have it be uh, unexpected. Can you hear that ice cream truck outside my house? <laughs> May- <laughs> just for a second, I heard something, but it wasn't. It wasn't too distracting. Um, okay, that's good. From where I'm sitting, it's incredibly loud. <laughs> I wanted to ask. Um, you know, specifically about someone who's credited as a collaborator with you on the record, uh, and, and and that's Angela. Um, this now I can hear the ice cream truck. Uh, uh-huh. As you know, Shushu has uh, been a band, has been something you've been masterminding for almost twenty years at this point, and Angela has been one of the biggest constants, you know, in that over yeah, the years yeah, outside of you, yeah, obviously. Two thousand ten, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, as, as a result of that, I guess I'm just wondering over the years, um, you know, how has that creative dynamic between the both of you changed and evolved? And, you know, considering all the changes Shushu has undergone, you know, since its inception, um, you know, what has uh, led to her, you know, being the constant that she is, as opposed to other collaborators who have kind of come and gone for, you know, uh, uh, good or bad reasons or whatever, you know, over that course of time? Uh, well, I mean, she and I had been really close friends for, you know, four or five years before she was in the band. So you know, our sort of emotional and social dynamic was very positive and laid out and, and established. Um, you know, a lot of other people have come and gone, like, I met them when they joined the band or something like that. So, uh, you know, so there's that aspect of it. I mean, we're really close anyway. And, you know, when you're close to somebody, it's easier to be free with them creatively. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it, sorry, I guess there's kind of two questions, like how things have, how, how have things evolved and sort of why has, has our relationship Yeah, I, 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 the, the why, I think you've already kind of explained, but, um, you know, out, outside of that, now that you guys are obviously not just friends, but frequent collaborators, um, you know, how has that dynamic creatively between the both of you changed or aged or grown over the years? And, uh, well, when, when, uh, when things, when things started, uh, I, I had been playing for years and years with Carolyn McElroy, who's another uh, incredibly important member and very, very talented, uh, singer and player. Uh, and, uh, she, you know, we loved each other, but we treated each other. We did not get along <laughs> at all. <laughs> I still love her very much and wish her well, but we did not get along in a band together. And so she she went off to join join uh, Cold Cave and did a great job in that band. Um, and Angel and I were friends, and I was like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? And she's like, well, no, I mean I played piano forever. Why don't I do that? It's like, Bing! so it start it started out more as like a, a functional thing, and we we did a fairly solid year of, of touring. And uh, she was uh, in law school at the time, so she took a year off law school to do that. Um, and, you know, then obviously she wanted to get back to being a, you know, going th- for the reasons she went to law school for was to, uh, you know, she wanted to work in public service, which she's gone on to do and is doing now. But she, it became so apparent that the, the band became, as you know, infinitely better with her as a member so uh it, it mostly things now aside from we, we were able to tour for a couple of years when we were doing twin peaks shows because they were just usually kind of like weekend one-offs but mostly her role now is is uh, producing the records and, and playing on them um it, generally i kind of see things in a really kind of overly focused micro way when i deal with the song that she deals with them in a macro way at this point we don't even really talk about it when we we know like I will go crazy and I'll be like, okay, there's seven keyboard parts here. I can't pick one. She'll walk in the room and she'll be number four and then she'll leave, you know, and she, she, uh, and she's a, once in a while I'll go, oh, I don't know, I think number five. And then I'll come back three days later and I'm like, oh my God, you're right. It was number four. It's so much better. You know, uh, she just, uh, I think as we know each other well, uh, and, uh, just our, our skill set essentially is, uh, I'm good at what she is not good at, and she is good at what I am. Wait a minute. I'm good at what she's not good at, and she's good at. You know what, you know what I'm trying to say. We we offset each other's weaknesses. It's a good mix. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. Did I yeah, answer I that? So. Well, I, I, I guess okay. I guess what I'm also <laughs> curious about is you know taking the time out of this record of duets to 
you know, commemorate that working relationship? Was there, you know, any, any kind of consideration to that to, you know, saying, hey, let's, you know, create a moment for ourselves on this record as well, as long as we're doing these duets with all these other people? It was a little bit of a secret thing for me because I, she's in the other room, so I feel like I have to use for this. She confided in me. <laughs> Don't say it too loud. That, I know, I know yeah, she's going to be mad. That, that she really wants to be a singer, but she's kind of embarrassed about it. Like she feels really self-conscious about her voice, but I think she has a mm. wonderful voice. It's very, oh, she's walking in the room now. She's getting the air <laughs> pretty dirty look. <laughs> I will also like to point out that she's eating potato chips while she's giving me a drink look. <laughs> so anyway, well, now that she, now that Ms. Cat's out of the bag, I think she has a beautiful voice. It's very fragile and very pure. And and I, I wanted to do it because I was hoping that she'll sing more. And uh, it, it was a way to say, well, you know, we did it. We did, we did do a duet once on uh, a record that came out in 2012 called yeah. Always. Um, but it was a, uh, you know, how many years, you know, eight years later, is there's a long time between duets. So it's sort of me trying to, you know, in a, in a roundabout way and encourage her to be more confident with her fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it certainly um, seemed like, I mean, knowing how long Angela has kind of been a part of the shoe shoe universe, it, it seemed like there was an effort to kind of put a pin in that in a way, you know, in the middle of the record. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way to put it. Hopefully she does more. <laughs> But now, no, I'm cursed. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I blew it. <laughs> my, my, my secret attempts to, to have to completely change rules and never have to sing again has been foiled. <laughs> um, uh... You know, I, I wanted to ask another thing about kind of the progression of the band over the years. I, I think I, like many other people, have noticed, um, you know, look, Shushu became popular in this wave of indie, even though Shushu is not strictly an indie project, obviously. Um, you know, but a, a lot of, uh, and, and this is not a diss toward anybody or shade toward anybody specifically uh, or anything, um, you know, but a, a lot of the acts that you came up with over the years, at least, you you know, within this decade, the past decade, I think have mostly kind of solidified their sound, solidified their audience and are just like, you know, kind of going for what a lot of listeners expect these days. Whereas every single time I hear about a new Shushu record, there's some kind of wild, totally unforeseen concept or direction that, you know, things seem to be going in, whether that be um, this latest record or, you know, the Twin Peaks record or, you um, uh, Angel Guts and Girl with Basket, and uh, I, I guess I wanted to ask: To what do do you attribute this? Uh, I guess a uh, uh, wild uh, series of adventures that you know you've put the band on uh, over the years uh, with each uh, you know conception that uh, uh, you drive uh, every project into that you deliver. I I would love to say that. It, you know, like I have like a good idea about what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I think it just it just comes from enjoying a wide variety of, of music and having a wide variety of musical interests. Um, I mean, there's there's something to be said for kind of coming up with the sound and, and sticking to it. Oh, you for know, sure. Uh, you know, Rothko paintings are you know after a certain period are all absolute total masterpieces yeah. um uh but i don't, there is nothing conscious driving it aside from just being completely obsessed with working on music and and absolutely terrified uh for the for the day when it, it is about us all over so uh, it's 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 unconscious head down just sort of like the mole burrowing through the dirt of what music is and you know seeing what will happen it w there's not a, there's not a ton of thinking going on I, I well now that you kind of put it that way is i i wanted to ask you if what was driving that is it work ethic is it catharsis is it a need to express yourself but maybe the way you just put it is, Most, is, mostly is, is, it, is it i was going to say is it terror are you driven by fear <laughs> yeah mo mostly yeah well, I wish that was not the case. Well, it's probably I, I, the most hey, true. look, I think I think fear can be a great motivator for <laughs> for, a yeah. lot of, for a lot of things. It gets you out of a burning building. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Well, I I guess it, if you don't mind digging into that, like, wh where does that fear come from exactly? Uh, 
I, I think it, it, some of it is kind of sweet, probably. I just, I, I feel so preposterously lucky that by some fucking miracle, I've been able to make a living as a musician. Um, uh, and just really wanting to spend as much possible time doing that as, as I can. Um, you know, before the day when I can't pay my bills doing it anymore. I mean, I would still do it when I can't pay my bills and I did before, you know, I did it before I was making a living and I, and I would still do it, but there's, you know, having and having all day, every day to pursue the thing that you love the most is a, an extraordinarily rarefied experience and, uh, you know, wanting to respect that and have that exist for as long as, as we can, is probably you know, losing the thing I love the most essentially. Uh, you know, and is, is, uh, probably where that fear comes yeah. from. And I, I guess sort of the, the drive to kind of just keep that flame going by tending to it as, as often as possible. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like it, it could stop it at any, at any second for a wide variety of reasons. And, you know, life is short. So, to, you know, do this magical, very special, ultra fortunate thing for as long as it is possible. Um, considering that, I guess I'm curious about, uh, I don't know how, how you sort of see the embodiment or the success of the band over the years, because you've been doing this for long enough to remember a time when uh, other bands as well as Shushu were promoted in certain ways or came across fans in certain ways. And then came the advent of social media and streaming and uh, everything else that, you know, arrives with that. And um, as a fan and as an outside you know, viewer, uh, it seems to me that there's still younger people getting into the music and discovering the older records as well. It doesn't seem like you necessarily have any trouble with, uh, uh, connecting with, uh, uh, fans who, uh, you know, are, are of another generation. But, uh, uh, do you at all personally as a musician who also has to kind of put on a, a promotional hat every once in a while and, you know, not just think about the music, but how is it reaching people? Uh, do you ever struggle personally with, you know, worrying about like, you know, how are we getting this record into kids' hands? How are people getting across it? Are people actually listening to it? Are people connecting with it? Are people enjoying it? Um, I, my, when I was, my, my dad was a, 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 a very accomplished musician and, and very, very successful when he was a, a musician, as, as was my uncle. And when, uh, I was, before I was in Chusha, I was playing in a lot of, you know, bands to, nothing was happening. You know, we didn't put any records out. We, you know, never toured or anything. You know, it was like a couple of shows. And, uh, it was right around the time that my the other person, I started Chusha with Corey McCulloch and I would start the band and I, and, and I was coming to terms with, okay, well, maybe this is not going to work out. Um, and, you know, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try one more time. And then if it doesn't work out, then I'll whatever, do it for fun and then go to grad school or whatever the fuck people do. And I asked my dad about it and he said, you know, I said, like, what do I, like, how do I get over? Like, what do I do? Like, what's like the best way to like promote the band, you know? And he said, never, don't ever think about it. Just put every, do make the best record you can possibly make. And if, if there's something to it, then it will, then the right people will get it. You know, it will it will end up in the hands of the right people. Um, and you know, it's it's not as if we don't you know we obviously you know participate in. You know, well, you're you're doing an interview. Um, you're, as, as you're we're talking, talking we're talking right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's not it's not as if we you know remove ourselves from that world entirely. But when we're we're making a record at the time when we're making a record, I mean, we it's impossible to remove your mind from it because you're a person and you're inundated with it all the time. And like I said. A lot of this is driven by the anxiety of, you know, how can we keep this going? Um, but I'm, you know, I'm the, the foundational thing that my dad told me about just, just really put, do your absolute best that you can, you know, and sometimes your best doesn't land or it doesn't, it, people don't, are not touched by it or they don't, are not moved by it or whatever. Um, but, it, you know, it, it'll make you insane, you know, trying, like trying to get over or trying to do it right. I think people who have short careers, kind of accidentally make a totally great first couple of records and then they start trying to get over and you know we're not crazy like you know we're we don't have a gigantic audience we have kind of a small kind of culty audience for which i'm super grateful um but i i think 
I think the reason that it, it has persisted is, uh, uh, you know, just the, the motivation has been to try to make the best record we can for the people who would listen to it and not think so hard about, you know, how can how can we get Spotify to put this on the front pages? Yeah. And, you know, that that's kind of the other conversely that that's kind of the other side of the coin of uh, being successful as, you know, a band that's changed over the years, because not only are you having to face, hey, how is this music getting out there in front of people promotionally, but also how is this because we live in a capitalist society, how is this generating any money so that we can live and exist? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's been a lot of conversation as of late, uh, especially as a result of Spotify releasing these claims that, oh, we're more transparent now and uh, we let you know what all the numbers are and everything. And, uh, you know, there there have been a lot of musicians who have spoken up, uh, rightfully so, you know, as, as a result of those claims. But um, at least on that end of things, I mean, I, I understand your sense that, oh, you know, make the best record, put it out there. I mean, to me, that totally makes sense because, I mean, it, it, if you want to hear Shoo Shoo, it takes a lot less effort than it might have if you were in the early 2000s and you might have to go out to the record store to find the new record or something. Hey, you got to click a few buttons on a, you know, on a streaming service and now you can hear it ASAP. But uh, at, at least in terms of, you know, people hearing the record and generating revenue off of it and making a living off of it. Uh, do you feel like that part, you know, musicians are really kind of getting the short end of the stick on the streaming end? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm, our label is going to pull out their hair and then you know, I'm sure I should be saying this, but all it's like the, the, of, of the, of the long line of musical kleptocracies that have evolved since we started making records, the current iteration is mind-boggling that this is legal um i i used to like when uh this is a terrifying testament to how long we've been around but like when napster started and all that happened i used to pull out my hair i'm like what can we do about this what can we do about this what can we do about this and then i realized there's nothing you can do about this you lost you were you know the band's lost and then it got even worse with streaming services and i was talking to uh i was talking a, a friend of mine is a a very, very famous, super, uh, super successful record producer. And I said, what do you think about this? And he's like, he's, he basically said that he's like, fuck it, just make records. Like it's, you're, 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 you're fighting. No one, no one, no, no, no one beats Wall Street, you know? Um, and don't, but don't worry about it. Just that is not, the, it's not the part of life that matters. You know, the part of life that matters is, you know, trying to, trying to, to put everything in Canada to make a record. So I don't, I mean, I, obviously I'm not happy about it, um, but there's plenty of other shit for me to worry about. Uh, there are infinitely worse things in the world. I think it's complete bullshit and jive, but it is merely bullshit and jive. It's not a genocide. It's not environmental collapse. You know, it's, it's not racism. Yeah. I mean, it's at this point, it's probably uh, nearly impossible to totally undo the paradigm shift that's occurred, but but, it, there's that also like you know it's just, it's just different if it, it we're it's fucked but whatever. It, I, as a working musician are you at all encouraged by some of the protests going on right now to at least like push for i don't know a cent to stream that sort of thing or or or, 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 or <laughs> yeah, do you feel no, like I, that's even like we're too far gone for that no if, if somebody has the energy to do that uh i am only grateful for for people's efforts to do it um uh you know, I mean, we are absolutely too small a band for them to care whether, whether whatever we say. But you know, if, if there's somebody who's you know a genuinely gigantic pop star, and uh, they have the guts and wherewithal to you know to do it, then thank you very very much, Taylor Swift. All right, um, I'm going to throw some uh, fan questions at you from the chat. You guys are welcome to continue uh, uh, putting them out there. Um, uh, we we've got a lot of questions about the back catalog, other records, because there are a lot of people here who've been listening to, you know, you and Shushu for a while. Um, if you can give, uh, for Danime 1880, uh, Hi. <laughs> a, a general overview of what was the, uh, uh, main inspiration for the track, uh, uh, guilt with, uh, or sorry, that, that was a, uh, typo there. Uh, they want to know the main inspiration for the girl, uh, uh, with basket or fruit record. Oh, um, 
Uh, let's see. There was it was a few things. Um, this, and probably half of the record is dealing with one theme, uh, and it, um, the the kind of more percussive bonkers, it's kind of more abstract tracks. Um, I I'm trying to not have this. I'm trying to have this make sense and not take 40 minutes. So <laughs> a friend of mine is an artist named Jan Bo, and he had he had done a couple of pieces based on lines that were said in The Exorcist. Um, some of the more terrifying, crazy lines. And he he basically named some pieces after these lines. If you looked at the pieces, they would seem unrelated. Um, but to him, they made sense. Uh, and it, I, I, we've collaborated together a couple times and I went and I saw a show that he did, it was wonderful and I saw the title of these pieces and it got me beginning to think about the idea of demonic possession, both literal demonic possession, if it literally happens, and figurative demonic possession, and what it would be like, what the person who is possessed is experiencing, what are they seeing, what are they feeling, what, what are the, the real devils or the figurative devils actually doing to them, uh, and uh, he had a retrospective at the Guggenheim and asked Shushu to do uh, a, a piece for it. And I just, I guess I sense it was essentially a, like a, an, an epic poem. Uh, just, just wrote just from like a first person perspective what someone, what a young person, a teenager was, who was possessed by the devil, what they were experiencing, what they were seeing. Um, and then I probably, probably half of the lyrics from the record were taken from aspects of that you know, a poem, which was part of longer sort of, I guess, performance or piece or long music, music piece. Uh, so it, I guess essentially that, and then there's a couple other songs on that which have specific unrelated topics, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess. That. Well, I, I actually <laughs> want to ask you a question off of, you know, something that you talked about uh, there, because not just on this record, but other uh, records and songs too. Um, you know, there, there are some other songwriters uh, of your generation that I could bring up, but, uh, you know, you strike me as one that very consistently and very boldly seems pretty unshy when it comes to writing from other perspectives, you know, literally from the perspective of another person. Um, and, you know, this could be somebody who is totally unlike you, you know, uh, existed in a different part of history or something like that, or had, has had experiences, you know, um, uh, very different from yours. Uh, but what, what continues to put you in that place where, uh, you know, you do that and you feel so comfortable doing that because I, I think kind of the standard for most songwriters is just, well, write what you know, and, you know, write from my own experiences, but you seem to in a very easy way, at least it seems like from, you know, the outsider, uh, to be able to pull from perspectives that aren't necessarily yours and, and write in from that point of view, very passionately and in a very compelling way. I, I, uh, well, I don't know that I necessarily, have necessarily feel comfortable mm -hmm. doing it. Uh, but I, well, let me put it this way. So, uh, before we started Shisho, I, I played in some other bands and I was, was, there was this drummer that we used to play with named Brady Fischler, who one of the best drummers I've ever played with fucking nuts, a stone cold cuckoo. And we were sitting next to each other, and I, I was reading this book about uh, the famine that was taking place in China during the Cultural Revolution. And I was thinking that you know, it was, I was quite struck and moved by it as, as one would be, and I was wanting to write a song about it. Uh, essentially, one of the things that happened during that time was uh, if people were having a child and basically would kill the child to feed the rest of the family with the, the baby, or if a, if a child died, they would, you know, use that child to feed the rest of the family to keep them from dying. You know, what what else are you going to do? Which you know is creates a tremendous amount of distress and cognitive dissonance when you put yourself into that position. And I was talking to uh, Brady about this, and uh, you know, I said, like, "Can I write about this?" And he and we were both sitting on the couch, and he looked and he said, "What else are you going to write about? Sitting on the fucking couch?" So he. Just <laughs> So, uh, you know, and this, this was probably, you know, four or five years before she, she started. Uh, so it, you know, it was, it, it, it wasn't like out of the gate. It was something that I was like, you know, felt like I could attempt to do, uh, it, you know, it, it was, it, it, it took a fair amount of 
kind of finagling and, and uh, development. Um, I don't always, sometimes I wonder if we have done the right thing. I mean, the attempt is, if, at any time we would do that, the attempt is to always honor that person's position as, and, you know, and by all means never attempt to, you know, ex exploit it or to do it in a self-aggrandizing way. And sometimes I think that it comes across successfully and sometimes I think we might have blown it. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a, it is a curious pursuit, um, but you know it's too late at this point to really go back and not do it anymore. I, I, so, <laughs> I was just working on a song before we did this that I'm I'm really I'm really wondering like I'm like oh I might be stepping over the line. I, don't know I mean do I don't know I I would encourage playing everything by ear you know and uh, uh yeah, yeah especially yeah, yeah. in today's day and age and and you yourself are well aware as as many shushu fans are over the years of there have been instances of of maybe some writers in a very disingenuous way taking the intentions of some songs in a wild direction thing like why would he say this why would he sing about this and you know he must be having this kind of nefarious intent behind writing this particular song when, you know, for anybody who's been following the band for a while knows that that's not the case. I, I think, I think it would be, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, the guitarist, Charlie Looker, who actually, he played a lot on, on, oh no. Um, and and I, I think because we've been around for a while and we have established it as a practice, it's something that we can continue to do without I mean, we still have to explain it sometimes, but it's not like you, it would, he was saying it'd be much more difficult to start a band today and to put forth that sure. practice. The people are, people, and, and fortunately, people are much more conscious and about what other people say and conscientious about yeah. what they say and conscientious and conscious about, you know, inhabiting lives that are not related to yours. Um, but he was saying, you know, I, and I hope that this comes across and it is always our intention to do it in the most re respectful possible way and do it from a place of, a, an attempt at empathy, um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if we would or could do it if we started today. Um, I have another interesting question here, which I think uh, is is almost like a, a music nerd kind of question because when people, yes. Well, it, it, it'll be an interesting point of self reflection, I think, because there are a lot of people who. Uh, I'll follow online and there will always be this kind of discussion when it comes to certain bands or acts, uh, especially when people are trying to get into stuff like, Oh, what album do I listen to first? What band do you know? What, what project do I listen to first from whatever artist? And, you know, depending on who that is, you're kind of faced with the difficulty of like, I, I really love this artist. I really love their work, but I, I generally their music is pretty weird and you know, it's, it, it's going to be kind of a hurdle for anybody who's kind of hearing them for the first time. So uh, this person's asking what part of your discography would you say is the most accessible? You know, so, so I guess maybe for that hypothetical moment when someone's like, Hey, what's that? What's this group you're always talking about? Or I'd really love to show my friend of this group, but what, what would be that entry point that you think would be easy to kind of show people? Uh, okay. I mean, it's a fair question to ask me, but I'm like absolutely the wrongest person <laughs> to answer this. Like, I, have, I have no, I have the least perspective on our catalog of any other human on earth. Um, I mean, it depends on what you mean by accessible. I mean, I mean, kind of half, half of our stuff is sort of very traditional sort of song based and half of our stuff is, you know, Coop bananas, noise collages, or whatever. So, I mean, if, if if you're into noise music, then I wouldn't necessarily suggest the poppiest music. And you know, I, I I would say I would say hypothetically, we're starting with an Imagine Dragons fan, like bit like a huge oh, oh. Imagine Dragons fan. Ah, uh, God, I guess I would recommend to them the second Imagine Dragons <laughs> record. <then>. Probably. <laughs> We might not do the right. No, I, ironically, that. someone did ask if you would ever be down to collaborate with Imagine Dragons. Someone did ask that as well. Well, they're my nephew's well, favorite band, go. so I to score points with my with my nephew, who I adore. I would do an RV. I'm, you know, they 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 write songs that a ton of people like. They know something. I'm sure I would learn a lot. Uh, a few people in chat actually. And they probably have good wine in the studio too. That's probably true. Uh, you know, I, I I'll give it to them. They came out with a double single recently, and and one of the tracks off of it is absolutely nuts. There's like wild drums on it and screaming. It's easily the most experimental thing I've ever heard them do. So they're doing something. 
Good for those guys. That's cool. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions about the masks in the background. A lot of people are kind of curious about the origin of, of those. Oh, um, uh, I collect things. <laughs> I have a lot of, co- I have a collection of collections. Uh, one of the things I collect is uh, Mexican paper mache masks and uh, Peruvian paper mache masks. Here's a portion of my collection. I have another one that's supposed to arrive tomorrow that I'm very excited okay. about. Speaking of nerds, it sparked my nerddom. <laughs> Um, a, a part of a, a, a very positive part of uh, my friendship with Angela is we like to travel together and we take a lot of uh, a lot of trips together. And uh, we've uh, gone to uh, we've been to Peru once. We've been to Mexico a lot several times. Um, so, are there uh, you know any other sort of nerdy hobbies or passions that have been kind of helping you get by during the pandemic outside of just kind of burying oh, yourself into the music <laughs> hole? I got nerdy nerdy topics and passions. Get me through any situation. <laughs> <laughs> I have a candy. I have a candy okay. collection. I go bird watching. I have about three hundred plants. I collect uh, books of Russian criminal tattoos. I recently got one from Russia, um, from the from a police department from the seventies. Um, I have a collection of rainbow trolls, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, I don't know. But if it's if it's kind of stupid and a little cute and a little maybe slightly troubling, then I probably have a collection. <laughs> it has to be that specific <laughs> mixture of things. Yeah, that yeah, that, that probably never runs out of that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to ask uh, really quickly before we uh, send you off about a few of the collaborators. Um, on the record that are maybe not turning as, as many heads for people or, or maybe people are not as familiar with like um, uh, Fabrizio, for example, who, I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing of uh, this person. Can you tell me like how exactly him and the Shushu, you know, uh, universe kind of came to intersect? Oh, uh, Fabrizio Palumbo plays in uh, an Italian psych rock band called uh, okay. Larson uh, from the city of Torino. And, uh, we met at a show, uh, Larson was Jarbo's backing band, and we met at a show in, together in Seattle in 2003, and I thought they played beautifully, and, and he, and we became friends then, and then Shushu and Larson have put, have, have a collaboration band called XXL, and we put out four records together, um, and I, and, uh, Fabrizio has some other bands, and both Angela and I have contributed to them, uh, to, to those Got other it. bands. Um, he's one of my favorite people in, in the in the entire world. A wonderful musician, a fantastic. Got person. it. Uh, I was just uh, curious about that one, and also um, uh, Suzanne, who uh, uh, had, had oh, Su- oh Suzanne yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who I believe is an actress. She was is mostly mostly an actress, uh, and in in Germany and what is uh, quite famous. Um, uh, but she has is uh, she also has a this is. She would shriek if I described it like this, but essentially a performance group called Cheap with uh, Vaginal Davis and Mark Siegel and uh, the artist Jonathan Berger. And uh, Shishu has done a lot of music for Cheap. Uh, we did we did an opera together and we've done uh, several kind of quasi concert performance art kind of things. Um, she's one of my very, very dearest, dearest and best friends. Uh, she's she's singing with uh, Leibach quite a bit. Got it. She's a great, great vocalist. Okay. Uh- now, uh, I guess with the record out, um, and unfortunately, you know, we're not getting right back into touring at the moment with the pandemic still subsiding thanks to the vaccines, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, you know, what are your immediate plans right now as far as uh, continuing with this record and just, you know, music in general? I mean, are you going to hold tight until touring becomes an opportunity or with that kind of up in the air, are you just kind of working on whatever's next? Uh, like as soon as we finished this one, we just started working on the next thing, um, which we, which we probably would have anyway, but it's not being, you know, disrupted by touring. Um, you know, I, luckily we have a functional studio, so it just, if not on tour, we would, we would be there anyway. Uh, so we're going to work on a new record. We have a subscription thing going, so we're continuing to do that. Um, and, uh, and then you know, doing some other music with the aforementioned Cheap, with uh, uh, Susanna's mm-hmm. group, um, 
yeah, just in front of Pro Tools okay. <laughs> very happily. All right, well, it sounds good. And hey, thanks. And I appreciate you taking the time to just dive into the record. Oh, man. You are the greatest. You're doing you're doing such a good job. Music journalism is I mean, music journalism is usually a boring drag, but you are a delight. Thank you for making it better. I really appreciate. Thank it. you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you saying those kind words. Uh, Very hey, true. Have a good one, and we'll uh, uh, follow uh, you guys for the next record as well. And just have a good night. Thanks, man. It's right. nice. To Bye. Talk.